Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliant stories where people comply to the letter but not the spirit of our request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Go Say Something. I work in security for a major US manufacturer, which despite all its flaws is a much better job than any I've had in the past. After I was hired, my manager warned me that HR has an outsized role in the company compared to others I may have encountered. I haven't necessarily noticed this myself, but I've only been with the company for a short time. Regardless, I always take HR concerns to heart because I like this job and don't want to jeopardize it. Now, the strangest thing about this job, to my mind, is that employees don't have access to the company's policies. I have asked for a copy of the employee policy manual more than once and have been repeatedly told that such a thing doesn't exist. One day, I was working at the front security desk when the HR manager, Karen, approaches and starts chatting with me. Everything was pleasant until an employee entered the building wearing pajamas. Karen starts fuming and tells me that I need to go say something to the young lady about her pajamas. I asked why and Karen turns her behavior towards me with, because it's against company policy and I said so. Okay, got it, no problem. I go and flag down the young lady and tell her, those pajamas look very comfortable, but the HR manager would like to have a word with you about them and point to Karen. I go back to my chair and the young lady approaches Karen, who is acting flabbergasted that she's going to have to deal with this. Karen manages to mumble her way through telling the young lady that her clothes are inappropriate and against policy. The young lady asks to see said policy. The pair head back to ward, presumably the HR officers, and I go back to whatever it was I was doing. The next day, my big boss, who is my manager's manager and is about three levels higher than Karen in the corporate structure, calls me into his office and asks why Karen wants me written up for insubordination. Having only had one interaction with Karen that day, I tell him about what happened. He basically tells me not to worry about anything, that he will handle it and that I will not be written up. The next day, the security office and every security post has a memo posted from my big boss. I don't remember it word for word, but the gist of it said, we are paid to handle security and emergencies only. We do not handle policy enforcement. If you are approached about a policy violation, you are to direct that person to their manager or to HR. I've only seen Karen a few times since that day, but every time I have, she has flat out ignored me. The next story is called Restaurant Management. I just started at a new restaurant. I've come from several corporate companies, but this place was the same store of a mom and pop company. I've always been a server, but I was hired as a bartender. In the interview, the two owners tell me that they are looking to make the place more professional and turn some things around. I get hired on the spot to come in the next day. I come in, no one knows anything. I'm not on the schedule, my trainer is late, there isn't a manager and the owners are nowhere to be found. When I actually start working, I'm just thrown in, expected to make drinks, take orders, know the kitchen, everything. No biggie, I jump in and do what I gotta do. Some highlights. The staff is drinking alcoholic drinks on the job, not measuring any liquor, giving out free drinks, not checking IDs and close the restaurant two hours early, etc. The next day, the only server scheduled for the dinner shift is running late. The morning server asked me to fill in until he gets there, so I end up just covering the entire floor. About 10 tables by myself on my second day in training. The owner tells me over the phone how awesome I am for jumping in and covering this and I'm exactly what they need to fix the restaurant. On day 3, they call me into the office to check in and see how everything is going. I tell them that I'm confused and I need recipes for the drinks since only one bartender knows any recipes. They ask me what I've noticed is wrong and I tell them what the other bartenders are doing that's not supposed to happen. I tell them honestly about the lack of controls, the lack of recipe cards and the closing early. They blame it all on the bartenders and thank me. Tell me that I need to keep an eye out and stay in touch with what's going wrong in the bar. I tell them straight up that the problem is the lack of management. That if they want recipe cards, training procedures or drink standards, they either need to do it themselves or pay a bartender manager wages to do it. That it isn't the bartender's fault that these things are wrong and they needed to step up. After a long, unproductive, unprofessional conversation, the owner told me to get out of his restaurant right now and never come back. So I did. And I took the other two bartenders on shift with me, leaving them with no one in the restaurant to serve. They wanted to tell me that I'm too ignorant about running a restaurant, but they get to figure out how to run their own restaurant now.
The third story is called Cut Them Up. In our Behind the Foundry line, we had a room that housed all of the pumps, slash gauges, slash computer controls for the line. In the back corner of the room, there were desks and some chairs that maintenance salvaged from the offices when they were upgraded. The maintenance crew would sit back there, sketch out plans for a project, or wait for a call if they weren't doing other work orders. Half the time, they'd take their breaks there because they were too tired to walk up to the cafeteria. This was kind of hidden from open view, and it was an unauthorized break area, but no one really cared because it kept maintenance close by for breakdowns. One day, we had a breakdown of over an hour in our department. It had taken too long to fix in the superintendent's mind, and he was PO'd. He goes back behind the line into that room toward the end of the shift and went off on them calling them lazy etc etc. There's an overlap of the shifts for maintenance, so each previous shift can let the incoming shift know of any issues that needed to be addressed. So the second shift was there, hearing the shooing out of the first shift. After the superintendent was done with his tirade, he told the crew on second to get rid of all of the desks and chairs in his department, cut them up and take them back to melting. He didn't want to see them there when he comes back to work tomorrow. Well, be careful what you ask for, you just might get it. As in our union contract, we are not allowed to disobey our direct order. The next day, he comes in a little before the shift and goes right to the pump room. He doesn't see one desk or chair. He then checked in with a foreman for a second and then went up to the offices. Not a single desk or chair there either. He got his wish. All of the filed papers in the offices and other office equipment were on the floor. No desks or chairs in his department, just as he ordered. When the second shift came in at the end of the day, he went off on them, asking what they were doing cutting everything up. They knew what he meant. They replied they were just following orders and didn't want to be called lazy for doing an incomplete job, so they did everything within the scope of his direct order. If he wanted just those desks and chairs in the pump room destroyed, he should have been more clear. He tried to write up the second shift workers for destroying company property, but it went nowhere, since they followed his orders. The superintendent and foreman's offices had to have desks and chairs express shipped so that they had a place where they could do their paperwork on. Since they no longer had a place near the line, they couldn't respond within under a minute. They would take their breaks in the cafeteria, from where it is at least a 5 minute walk to the line before they could start working on the breakdown issue. I was told by a foreman once that for every minute the line was down, it would cost $3,000 from front to back for all of the workers that were left idled waiting on the line to start up. After a couple of weeks, the chairs and desks were eventually allowed to reappear, so maintenance could be at the ready to respond within a minute. One additional 5 minutes of downtime due to walking from the cafeteria would pay for the whole maintenance crew for a whole week. The last story is called Internally or Externally. This happened back at the end of summer 2021. I was working for a healthcare organization doing DEMIC specific management, and as August rolls around, I start hearing word that the DEMIC team is going to be phased out. Mind you, when I was hired for this job, I asked questions about the post DEMIC plan for my position. I was assured I would be rolled into the department in a position at the same seniority and pay scale. So of course, I go to my boss and ask him what the plan is. What he tells me is that there is not a specific role lined up for me, and that you should be applying internally and externally. The implication from him and his boss was that I was a shoe in for an internal position. But after receiving no training and no oversight for the past 3 months in my current position, I wasn't feeling very valued. Apply internally and externally? I'll do just that. I applied for two internal positions and I sent off resumes to half a dozen or so other companies, knowing that in my field of work it might take a bit to hear back from other organizations. I get one of the internal positions fairly easily and transition to a much more administrative role. The same salary. The pay was non-negotiable, but it was working from home, so at least I saved time and money on the commute. My new team and the new boss are great, but I was still pretty disillusioned with the organization after how I was treated. Lo and behold, two months later, I get a call from one of those external companies. They have a position that they think I would be a great fit for. Do I have time for an interview this week? I do two interviews and have an offer by the end of the week. A similar position, better benefits, still working from home, more training and career development. Oh, and also a 50% pay increase from what I'm currently making. I put in my two weeks notice that Friday. During my exit interview, HR asked why I'm leaving and if there was anything they can do to convince me to stay with the organization. 
I informed them that I merely followed my boss's instructions to apply both internally and externally and that a non-negotiable salary implies that no, they can't do anything. I did feel bad about leaving my second team after such a short time, as my second boss was fabulous and all my coworkers were great, but I just couldn't trust the company. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and would like to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.